Yo, what's up guys? This is Joe Crush, and today I'm making a new guide going over Gamma Howl, specifically uh, Gamma Howl stance and all its transitions. So first question is, what is Gamma Howl? And basically, it's a new power stance that has like super powerful moves that are, can be made high, um, high powered through a bunch of different things like heat. And you can also do it manually 3 plus 4, although that's a little bit tricky. And I'll definitely go more in depth on another video. But um, also, we just got some little notes right here, like Rage Art activates in 8 frames, so it'll beat out anything slower. So keep in mind, like a lot of times you're supposed to frame check with 10 frames or with certain certain stuff in stance and the 8 frame rage art, it's a big problem for the stance. As well as our move acting at 7 frames, so it's a little bit faster. Um, so these are some, some little notes I got. But yeah, let's go ahead and move into the each stance um, and talk about each one, each transition more in depth. Okay, and to start off here, we got... Uh, 1-1 one, one and forward forward 1. I put them together because although, you know, forward one, uh, forward, forward 1 and 1-1 one, one start off at different frames, they're kind of like different tools. They both end the same on like frames since they end both with like uh, jackhammer. And as well as um, when they go into stance, they have the same frames. So for all intents and purposes, these pretty much have the same frames on hit, on block. So I would put them together. So first off, of course, um, Forward forward one can leave you at plus four. So let's turn on this right here. Also, let's just turn this off for now. So yeah, it'll leave you at plus four, which gives you pretty decent on block on on block too as well. So at plus four, you can trade with Gamma Hall four, and that kind of starts off the stance, you know, just showing them that you can kind of continue your turn. Um, and then as well. You got some other cheeky options that are the fastest ones we have. The technically next fastest ones are down 1 plus 4 and 2 plus 3. And uh, those are just to catch people crouching. So you, that'll come out at like... Oh, it'll trade with like 11 frames. So down jab does beat out the crouch throws, unfortunately. Like we can test it right like right here. So I, I mean, if they made a plus 5, it might be a little bit too crazy. But yeah, down jab beats it out. Um, and the next fastest ones are 1 plus 2. Uh, 1 plus 2 is just a grab. So that still gets beat out because anything other than the 4 pretty much yeah gets beat out. Um, but we do have like a little tricky things so that we can go over like next move forward 2. Forward 2 is the next best option to interrupt simply because it can crouch. It can uh, crush sometimes like right here. It's a little bit finicky. It doesn't work all the time but just the fact that you can sometimes beat out jabs with the 4. Like right here. And then like sometimes you could beat out um, jabs with 4-2 as well. Okay, now it's not trying to work with me, but let's try it. Really it was working. Practice mode always tries to fuck with me, man. Well, it's not trying to work right here anymore. I don't know why. But it can work off of other things like, you know, other game has some transitions. Maybe if I put it on single jab. Let's put it on single jab real quick. Let's try again. Okay, well that one's not working. Let's try this one. See, now we have we kind of skipped a little bit, but we uh, have another high crushing option with forward one, which is one of our slower options. On block, it'll come out at 16 frames, so your opponent has like plenty of time to hit you um, within 15 frames, especially a 50 frame launcher. So it's a little bit riskier going for this one as well, but you can just mix these really well to beat out jabs. Um, and then, you know, the next one we have is the two, all the other two, the three plus four, four to one, all trade at 16 frames on block. Um, let's see, next we could talk about just uh, one. Let's see, Gamma Hall one. That one trades at 18 frames right here on my notes. Um, but essentially, all of these, uh, it's kind of get beats out. I mean, I mean, unless you're doing like an armor move. You're just going to beat out. The only ones that also beats out jabs is like the 3 plus 4. You know, that can make it safe. The 1, 2 will carry it. Um, and then also if you're in heat, of course, you could beat out jabs with that. But essentially, you know, without heat, you can beat out jabs with 4. And then, you know, start to get them ducking or sidestepping. And if they start sidestepping, you can do the Gamma 1. They start, um, you know, ducking, you do some bigger mids or something like that. Just to track them down. 
But essentially, you know, one thing that is just really, really annoying against the sense I just want to show off early that I have right here is that the movement is very, very good against all these options. So if they're not trying to jab you out, they'll most likely be trying to move away. Um, and you show you right here, like, all these options get beat out. Even the four gets beat out. So a lot of times people try to sidestep left block or sidestep sidewalk left to beat a lot of options. So the only thing I'd recommend out of stance to beat it is sometimes you can do forward one, but you run into a good player who can like sidestep block. But besides that, you could do forward three, one plus two. And now this works as long as they keep tracking throws in the game. Right now, uh, throws still track. I'm very concerned if they, you know, would take a nerf to the tracking throws, which I mean, I wouldn't mind, but it would be pretty bad for the stance as the sidestep left block OS will constantly beat out every option here except for certain things um well, i'm doing four three but you know we could do one one and cancel now you're on the plus four you can kind of just not do the stance one of my favorite things is just like catch people with forward forward wolf four i mean down forward four just hold back down forward four catch him moving or you just down forward two so sometimes to track them Instead of, you know, committing to the stance, just hold back and get out and just try to catch it moving. You know, pretty consistent one is two jab. So that's mainly you're going to have to uh, stop him from doing that. So you can force your 50-50s with the guard break high in the mids. And then besides that, another good option just to like off a of 1-1 and forward forward one I want to go over. Is that with these moves, you can just completely block. So um, it's really, really important that you're able to like rep that sometimes so that way you don't have to commit every single time and you know risk your life so like right here on the notes i have can block rage art on hit and block now one one and forward forward ones are the really only ones to do this like uh it's right here let's put back on the jabs just so you see like tries to jab me out you'll see that i can block it in time same thing with one one hits me I, I just uh, maybe able to block it and not, not only that you can actually recover and crouch so you can crouch under stuff so you can completely just like return to neutral and do whatever you want you can block you can duck and not only that what's even better one of the best option selects people like to do against um, gamma how is to down jab it and one of my favorite reasons to you know do one one a forward forward one it says you can actually low parry down jabs out of 1-1 one, one and 4-4-1 forward, forward, one only. So this tech and just the offense you can apply from this one right now as it is, is insane. It's definitely the top tier Gamma House stance transition. And that's why I want to put it first. Just because any counterplay people do, you can just consistently beat it out. You want to, you know, sometimes what people like to do to beat out um, the options is like grabs. You'll see like a lot of high level people beating it with grab. Let me see. Cause it beats out a lot of the options and it'll counter hit grab. The only thing it doesn't beat out is a four, you know, beat out the three, all these different options to grab them out. So one of my favorite things to do is just to go into stance and duck and punish. Just completely stuff it, have them second guessing themselves. Um, same thing with the rage art. A lot of times people get pan panicky with the rage art or even the armor. Let me just put both just to rep them on both. You can just completely block, bait them. Let's see if he does the armor. Same thing here. And then with anyone tries to armor, one last thing you can do is um, you can grab him out. So just keep in mind, that's another decent option with the forward one plus two. It comes out at 12 frames, so it's pretty fast. It'll beat out a lot of stuff. But that's mainly for the situations on block. On hit, it gets a little bit better. Um, one of my favorite things to do while it's on hit one little secret nice thing you can do. Wait, hold on. Let me go ahead and put it to rage. So 1-1 one, one into the grab. It beats it out just so you see my notes right here on hit. 4 comes out at 6 frames, so it'll beat out armor and rage art. Because rage art comes out at 8. Armor comes out at 7. So the fact that on 4, on, on hit... Four is completely locking them down just makes this you know even better um whereas like on block you can just lock them down with 10 hits uh 10 frames which it'll trade but on on hit it's completely stuffed so they can't do anything they have to hold only thing they can do is just 
you know, duck, which is a hard read, opens them up to the mids. So on hit, definitely take advantage of that. If they try to do anything, just for them. And then once they start to duck or respect it, you can definitely open up with other options. And the secondary option we have to beat armor and rage art on hit is forward forward uh, the grab. Those just completely knock them out. That was a rage art. Let's try the armor. He's not really armoring from crouch, but um, can you up forward to them? I wouldn't recommend up forward to no. And the next option at nine frames comes out forward to. And that will beat, Rage Art will beat that out. So I really wish we had like a safe, not a safe, but like a high and mid option to like stuff them out on hit. But if you try to go for the mid, that's not really working right there. For some reason, I really want to work on hit. To demonstrate this, I'm just going to have to do to myself on Jack. For some reason, the, the bot just doesn't like doing stuff from Crouch. So let's go ahead and rep this real quick. So yeah, I'm putting it on defense. Record this. Have it do 1-1 one, one on hits. Whoops. 1-1 one, one on hit into forward 2. Record that. I don't have rage on. And put on rage. See, so yeah, I'm gonna get hit. And rage art just barely beats it. It activates at 8. That move comes out at 9. Same thing with the heat. I mean, the armor. You can armor through. You can do any one of your armor options. So just keep in mind the forward two will not save you from armor or rage, but it still comes out at eight frames, so it'll completely stop any other moves besides that and a catch in mid, so that's pretty good. And then the next one after that are like some of the slower moves on hit, which are the two, three plus four, and forward one. And those call all come out on 12 on hit. So they have 12 frames to trade with you, 11 frames to interrupt. And um, so it's kind of like, you know, not super locked down, but, you know, gambling on pressing right there. You know, they have a little bit of like 11 frames to interrupt. And if they really want to take that, it just opens them up to the forward two, the uh, grab, the four. So any of your quicker options can beat them out. And then also the armor. The armor just simply just beats it out because it's armor and it'll just eat it, you know. And then forward one. Forward one just hatches the launch. So if they do anything else slower than 13, they'll just get it with the launch. It's a little risky. And then the second, the one will trade on 14. So they have a little bit more frames to like mash on this one. And then lastly, they have a little bit more frames to mash on the three at 16 frames. So you're definitely slower options. They can still interrupt on hit. But still pretty good stuff to do, you know. Does the armor tube score come out on frame seven then? Yeah, the armor yeah comes out on frame seven. So... You know, it definitely like beat anything out. If you know, if you like do a one one, you're plus eight. The armor activates at seven, so there's still one frame before they can even do anything before the armor is coming out. So yeah, armor is just a safe option just to stop anything. Um, and then just any last is it one like little last minute thing I want to go over with the secret tech I have here on my Gamma House special interactions, the delay. Gamma how to add tracking to the stance. So this is a little bit more of a risky option because you're kind of just open up in the stance um, on hit. Yeah, I'll show you right here with the movement. You have to like leave yourself open, but a slight delay will um, help you track. Let's put it right here. Sidewalk. Yeah, let's try the gamma hall options again. Let's do standing block. Oh, maybe Jack's not playing no good character. This on. He will get clips. Yeah, let me pick another character. Let's go back to Jin. Alrighty. And then, yeah, let's try it. Step, step, step. But one thing you can do to kind of make it hit here more consistently. Whoops. It's just slight delay. See, that one's not trying to work no more, but let's try, like, say, one, one, four. Okay, well, now that's not trying to work. But sometimes it does help to, to delay a little bit into the stance. Mainly, one that really works is the forward two. The forward two really 
Has good opportunity track. But yeah, it's a little bit hard. Most of the time, you definitely just want to either just cancel the stance into like 2-3, catch a moving like that. But um, another nice thing that you can do with this, I record this. That's rough, yeah. Not working anymore. Practice mode is a little finicky sometimes. Record this movement, record again. See, I want to show this real quick. Record this movement, yes. So a lot of times, down jabs, like I said, it's like one of the best options to beat out Gamma House Dance. But yeah, you can crush this with a down three. Um, same thing with the jabs, you can crush jabs with forward two or forward one. And then what else I have on my things? Uh, forward two, crush jabs, crush jabs. Yeah, that's pretty much it. So yeah, let's just go ahead and move on into the next part of the notes. All right, guys, we're moving on into the next transition. And this one, again, I have them grouped up because for all intents and purposes, they're pretty much the same. It's going to be wall standing three and forward three. Oh, let me just turn that off real quick. Um, and yeah, this one, it's uh, one of the quickest transitions. Just how, like, on, visually it looks like it goes into it, right? It's one of the faster ones as compared to, like, some of the other slower ones. Like, 1-1 one, one takes a long time. 4-1 four, four, takes a long time. Um, even some other ones, like, side step two take a little bit. Whereas this one just happens, like, super quick. A little bit quicker. That's one thing I always took out to me when I first looked at it. But unfortunately, although it looks super quick, on block, uh, it's, it's not as good as 1-1 and forward forward 1. First off, one thing I'll talk about, forward 3 and wall standing 3. With 1-1 one, one and forward forward 1, we could block on hit. But just to show you, if I go into stance on block, there's nothing I can do about the jab. It was just going to hit me. So if they commit to a 10 frame, we're going to have to, if we're going to commit to the stance, they commit to a 10 frame, they're going to hit me out. So if I don't do some options to beat that out, then we're going to get messed up. You know what I'm saying? Like the four, unfortunately on block, the four comes out at 12 frames. So they have plenty of time to jab you out. Um, so after that, there's not too many options we could do besides a couple sneaky ones. And like one I was talking about earlier with the high crush with forward two. If they try to jab you out, a lot of times you could forward two. And it works a lot, really well after 4-3. I think they kind of intended that. It doesn't work so much well after 1-1 one, one into it. But I think they want to give us a, a little bit of a sneaky way to beat out jabs. So if you're trying to just beat them out, mashing on you, try 4-2. Um, although it comes out on block at 15 frames. So, you know, it'll probably it'll beat you out at 14 frames, but trade with 15. So a, a good amount of mids will still hit you. And yeah, the next option after that to beat them out would be our next fastest options that's tied with two, three, four, and forward one. It's just going to be the bubble burst. And they do a single jab. A lot of times they can cover quicker. But like I was talking about earlier, if they try to beat out the forward two with like a, a quicker mid, they'll definitely just get armored here. Let me record this one here. So it's just like a quick 13 frame mid to catch me ducking. See, that'll hit me out. So now they know, okay, they need to do some mids hit me. That's when we start repping some of this. Trades right there, but a lot of times, um, just for, you know, purposes of showing it off, let's just do like, fucking can can, 15 frame launcher, something like that. And it'll turn it to a whole heat engager, you know what I'm saying? As well with the heat, we can turn it into a combo if we get that read. And that makes it super, super good with all the damage we can get off it. So, definitely some good mogging with the 2 plus 4. Good trickiness if you want to catch the mashing on you. But then it kind of goes back to the grabs can beat you out. Because grabs can beat you out the armor. So, there's, there's still some kind of play to that one. Um, as well, if they try to sidestep, this bubble is really good at tracking the sidestep. So, I definitely recommend that. It's just the only thing you have to worry about. Yeah, it's minus 13. So, it can't be punished. And the next after that, on forward 3, I want to talk about... Just the extensions. Mainly we're talking about ways to beat it out on when you transition into the stance. But one thing, one common thing you're gonna see about Jamal, a lot of things that make it even better is the things right outside of it. Like not committing, blocking, ducking, like how we talked about when you can block after one one or four forward one or duck. With forward three, we can't block on hit or on hit. Uh, we can't, yeah, block on block or on hit. 
What we can do is we have extensions to mash. Luckily, forward three. We can go into Gamma Hall, right? Or we can use four, three, two. Or four, three, one plus two. Now, both these are great. This one's like a wall spotting. High. Does a decent amount of damage. Knocks down. If they're you know, if they trying to mash anything, they might not be tech rolling. And you can guarantee follow-ups. But it's a high, and people tend to duck it like when you're trying to go for this, you know? Um, so one thing I'd recommend that really, really is just saves the day is 4, 3, 1 plus 2. This move is amazing just because it's not even Gamma. A lot of times you catch people trying to beat out Gamma, but they shouldn't be worried about that. It'll beat out Rage Art. Let's try Rage Art real quick. Let's see. Oh, that's a grab. So it'll beat out grabs. It'll counter hit grabs, which is huge. Same good Rage Art. Tries to Raider at me, he's just gonna get hit. Same thing with armor, let's try armor. It'll counter hit armor. So, yeah, in Gamma Hell, there's, there's a few sneaky ways to steal back your turn, but mainly the extensions right here are super, super clutch. You know, at the wall, you can get a wall splat. In the neutral, you get a counter hit launch. You have to be wary because this one's duckable. The 11 frame um, is minus 11. Which is not bad at all. Minus 11 is very spammable. So just keep in mind that if you ever want to call them out, that 4 to 1 plus 3 is just calling your name, you know. And then uh, after that, the other moves are just too slow to hit. I mean, they could be steps to the left. So you mainly don't want to do those, especially like 4, 3 into 3 on hit. But the, where 4, 3 and wall standing 3, like, shine super, super hard is on hit. And now if we take a look on the on hit frames, it's kind of a little bit, it may be a little bit confusing because it's negative 2, negative 1, negative 1. That's because those options come out so fast, like, they still have two frames before they can even attempt to do anything. They're completely locked down. They can't even, they're locked in. Because 4-3 on hit. Let's put them on standing. And then punish. Let's put the punish for just as jab. Oh. Is only a counter hit? Yeah, it's plus five, so a lot of things will beat this out. He tried to beat out jabs. He'll beat that out. Back before it's nice options. It's 13 frames. Hi, YouTube. Yes. Um, but yeah, on hit, this turns into a whole nother beast, man. Plus 16. Yeah, there you go. That's what I was trying to get it at. I was going to be like, plus five? Wait a minute. It's because I'm going to stance. But yeah, on hit, plus 16, which is crazy. It goes from like on block to being a, just only plus three, which doesn't give us too much room to work with. I think, yeah, it's plus two, plus two. Not very plus at all. But on hit, it's 16. So essentially, that makes the four just a complete shutdown. It makes it, if they try to down jab out of getting hit from that, you'll crouch grab them. Because now the crouch grabs beat out down jabs. So that's huge. And then uh, same thing with the one plus two. The one plus two just completely locks them down. They're going to start attacking at zero frames. They can't grab you out. Also, one thing a little need to know about the grab is on counter hit, you get a guaranteed attempts on the throw. So if you're kind of just spamming it and it just so happens to be counter hit, you get a little guaranteed attempts. Only bad thing is like for some reason it counts as combo, so it'll do less damage. But I mean, it's still breakable. It's not even combo, but you know, interesting little thing right there. But yeah, the next thing on hit is forward two. And yeah, forward two just completely locked down at one frame. They can't do nothing on one frame. Same thing with the two. The two comes out at you know they have like four frames i like got now they have four frames to try to do something. this yeah you need 10 frames or even eight frames to activate rage art so yeah the two just complete free opportunity to mix them up with that with the guard break you know if i go into heat you just have to hard read there's no sidestepping there's no armoring there's no there's no rage heart um and that makes it just all the other options even better because now the forward one will beat it out of four frames you can't do nothing about that and mainly important thing to tie up like the guard break two and the one mix is that now our one comes out at six frames. And the six frames is very, very important because that beats out, like we talked about earlier, armor and rage art. So that means we can just uh, safely attempt our 50-50 in heat 100% of the time and they just have to pure guess. So let's see, yeah. Try armor. He's gonna try to armor that. I'll do the one, beats it out. You know, if I'm in heat and I land that, they try to mash on me, like harm it, that's a combo. Let's try the Rage Art. 
Uses that as well. Same thing with the two. Right? Two beats out the Rage R2. So just keep in mind, it's, it's, it's very risky when you go into 4-3 because you can't block. But if you can just try to, like, catch them pressing with a 4-3 plus 2 on block or even on hit, that's great. And then, you know, when you finally get the 4-3 to hit, you just full reign to do whatever you want, you know. And then one last thing about this. Um, the 3 comes out at 8 frames. So the only bad thing that's like doesn't lock them down is the 3 because it's so freaking slow. Because it comes out at 8 frames. So even on hit, they can rage art. So that's just one thing you got to be worried about that. That's fucking annoying, you know. Doing that, getting hit. I think it'll still beat out armor. Let's try armor. Actually, won't beat armor. So just keep in mind, 3 is the only option they can mash out of pretty much with their armor or rage art. Um, so it's a bit of a hard read, but you have plenty of different options kind of stuff that, you know. Yeah, that's going to cover it for wall setting 3. Just one last little thing. Yeah, wall setting 3 on the last hit. You can kind of get some follow-ups. I like to do like either down back 4 or wall standing 3. Um, just for a little okay follow-ups. Yeah, that's going to cover 4, 3, wall standing 3. Uh, one last little thing. Um, you can block rage art on hit, but not on block. So that's another thing. Like we said, once you commit, you're kind of screwed. Unless you do something beat it out. So rage art, doing this in rage is very, very... Um, Finicky, you know, you don't want to get hit out. Let me see, change this real quick. Doing this on rage is a little bit scary. If I go into it on block, it's fine, right? I mean, on hit, it's fine. But on block, we're screwed. Nothing beats, I mean, we can trade with the four. Only thing that beats it out, like I said, is the extensions. So just keep in mind, you just have to be worried about that. But if you do hit it on hit and you just kind of want to like test them, you can block for the. Just keep in mind, you know, you want to get ate up by Rage Art. But yeah, let's go ahead and move on into the next version of the stance. All right, moving on into the next Gamma House transition. And this is one, one of my favorite ones, Sidestep 2. Um, Sidestep 2 is really amazing. One thing in, on block is that it's plus 9. So you have tons and tons of time to attack. Um, you see on the frame data here, sidestep 2 on block will stuff anything you do at 5 frames. So it beats out armor, rage art, any kind of jabs, any kind of movement. Um, let's go ahead and just try the movement just, just to really make sure. Oh, that one's ducking. For some reason, he's ducking. Um, it's supposed to be moving. Let me just try a quick step again. Yeah, he tries to move plus 9 into the 17 frame. You're not going nowhere. You know what I'm saying? Uh, same thing with the uh, down jabs. Um, they come out at 6 frames, so they do beat down jabs. I saw that sometimes you're not even in range, though, because they're too far. But if you hit it really, really far, but um, and especially the back dash. But yeah, definitely not any issue to grab them out if they try to down jab you out. And the next one, we have the 7 frame grab. See you tomorrow? Yeah, no problem, fire truck. The 7 frame grab, it coming out at 7 frames is huge. Because armor comes out at 7. So if he tries to do an armor, he's just going to get counter hit grabbed. Check that out. Armor just barely activates, which is good. Because if it activated at 6 frames, they it wouldn't get it wouldn't beat out beat it out or guarantee a hit. So that one frame, just making it at 7 is just huge. Any armor they do, knock them out with a grab. You know what I'm saying? Um, so between these two options, you know, you can definitely start to get them to duck. Just have these locking down super hard. Both of them track with the frames. Both of them beat out um, armor and rage. So then you can start doing some of your mids. Like you do forward two. But unfortunately, once you start going mid, armor and rage art once again start beating you out. Because the forward two comes out at eight frames. Armor activates at seven. Same thing with rage art. Rage art activates at eight. So he had just, just enough time. Look, it seems like the move's just about to hit. Beat him out. And he's able to rage art, so um, just keep that in mind if you're trying to go for mids. And if they have armor or heat, they can, you know, mash you out. Um, but you know, like again, I said, you can lock them down in multiple different ways. The the grab rage art gets beat up by the grab as well. Like I said, not quick enough to activate. So then next we have the three plus four and the two. So the two comes out at 11 frames. So 
It can be jabbed out. But you don't really go for the two too much regularly unless you mean you just want plus 11 for no reason. You know, I mean, uh, plus 11 is nice every now and then. So I can't get beat out. But of course, if I'm in armor, I just completely go through it. Even counts as a punish, you know, so they can't duck under that. And same thing with the armor, the bubble burst. The bubble burst comes out at the same speed, so it'll beat it out. Which are some, you know, good ways to also stuff out any other, like, mashing besides armor and rage art. Um, forward one. Forward one. Although it does have high crushing, for some reason after sidestep two you do a jab. I don't know, maybe just the frames don't work out right. You're not gonna high crush. You know, after like forward three, it would high crush. Maybe even like forward forward one. High crush. But sidestep two, unfortunately. I guess they don't want to give us too many options to beat out jabs, you know. Um, and then the one and the three. The one comes out at 13. So that can be stuffed out at 13. And the three again, just super slow. Comes out at 15. But luckily... It coming out 15 is not the worst because, you know, usually most launchers that try to launch you out come out at 15, so it'll at least trade. So I have to do something 14 frames or quicker to beat you out. So you can definitely take a little bit more leniently, uh, leniency doing the sidestep 2 instead of the 3. So, I mean, unless you're playing a character like a 14 frame launcher, but most of the time it's 15, so take a little bit of liberty with that. Um, and then let's see, one thing I want to talk about with this one, sidestep 2. Yeah, plus nine, it's pretty hard for them to move around. I'll show you if they can move around against the mixes. Yeah, plus nine, it's pretty hard to evade that. That's one of my favorite reasons why I like to use sidestep two, because uh, a lot of people like to do the sidestep left block option selects. But at plus nine, you're just like so minus. A lot of times you can't even hit it. Especially if you try to do something quicker and then you can get clipped. Same thing with the one. The one comes a little bit faster. Messes with the timing. So you can catch them. Uh... Not correctly sidestep blocking on that right timing. So yeah, sidestep 2 is super, super good. And of course, uh, on hit, it gives you guaranteed follow-ups. So you can do a bunch of different follow-ups. Easy ones, like sidestep 2 into forward 1. You can do the 3, although sometimes it's whiffs at range. Like right here. So most of the time, I like to stick to forward 1. Just the range on it is really insane. And then of course, if you don't go into Gamma Hell, you can do blue upper. So yeah, pretty good stuff for max damage. And see, anything else I want to talk about? Sidestep 2. Pretty good on block. Good options to beat them out the armor and rage. The, um... Oh, yeah, the basically one crucial thing about the 2 and the 3 plus 4 coming out 11 frames is that it will beat out, even though it's armor, it'll beat out 11 frame grabs. Uh, with Jin, I only have a 12 frame grab, but just kind of for demonstration. Um, I tested earlier with 11 frame grabs, just to make sure. This right here. It will beat it out. Let's put them on block. And now, you know, that's huge because if they were able to knock us out our armor with 11 frames, that'd be pretty difficult to deal with, you know. We have a lot less options to beat them out. But the, so the, that means the only grab that will beat our armor options after sidestep 2, like the 3 plus 4, um, are going to be Giant Swing. It's the only other 10 frame grab I know about. So just be aware that singular matchup. If you're playing against a king on side step two, uh, after side step two, he might want to giant swing you if he knows the frames or if he knows the meta. You know what I'm saying? Um, but then again, you could just you can crouch cancel. You can block in time. So keep in mind if you, that one that one matchup, the king tries to giant swing you, just duck under the hoe, launch his ass. You know. Let me try it right here. I see. Or. Just lock them down with one of the options we talked about. But yeah, I think that's mainly going to cover it for Slice Up 2. Pretty simple. There's the only stuff you can do on block. It's really, really good. I definitely recommend you uh, abuse it. Especially people who are really good at Slice Up left option selecting. Just try it out. You'll see. Like It's hard to option select if it's if they can even try to move it all. And one last thing I wanted to add on to Ford 4 2 onto my little notes underneath the frames. Is that uh, first off, you can block Rage Art on block. So let's just go ahead and try that real quick. So... Just in case your opponent has rage and they want to panic, you're able to block in time. And the reason why you're able to block in time is because uh, you can start blocking at 12 frames. So just to kind of demonstrate this, let me also add 1-1, one, one, a 12 frame move. So let's start with an 11 frame jab first. If I do sidestep 2 into block, at 11 frames you will get hit. So 10 and 11 frame moves are able to punish you trying to block. Um, but anything slower than that, 
you'll be able to block in time. All right there, one, one, one frame slower at 12 frames, and we're able to block in mine. So just keep in mind, you anything uh, slower than 12, you'll be able to block, but be be wary of you know those 11 frame mash buttons. He says, he, can we recover and crouch to avoid that, though? No, you see, you can't even go into crouch. You're just completely locked in the stance. So that means even a panic down jab would... You, you can't low parry panic down jabs on here. So just keep in mind, you have to commit. But committing to this one's really not too scary. Still some good stuff, you know? But yeah, that's going to be the last little extra thing on side step 2. But yeah, let's go ahead and move on into the next uh, Gamma Hall stance transition. So next we're moving into the next uh, Gamma Hall transition and this one is like the only one he can do from a low which is pretty interesting makes it pretty unique it's gonna be up forward three and so I'm um, just to preface this you can only do it on hit because on block it is minus 17 launch punishable um, yes yeah, so you, it, it's fully launch punishable I mean um, so it's pretty risky but you know, it's, I would say it's unseeable. It's a little bit of high crush. Also, the AOE on it is pretty crazy. So, like, you could be somewhere on the side. So, I understand why they want to make it really risky. Just because how offensive it can be. You know, if you do get the read that you can block it, you get a big, big reward. Um, so, maybe we should be yeah, focusing on the frames on hit. Now, luckily, it's pretty easy um, to remember the situation. Because it's the same as 1-1 one, one and 4-4-1 forward, forward on hit. Because both of these are plus 8 and put you in crouch. So just how 1-1 one, one puts you in crouch at minus 8 or plus at plus 8 for you. Up 4-3 literally does the same thing but just from a low. So that means the same things as the Rage Art stuffs it. I have the bot recorded to do it because for some reason the bots don't like to do armor and Rage Art from crouch. So me as a human, I'll just go ahead and demonstrate it. But yeah, I try to armor. I'm going to try to Rage Art here. It's just going to keep on knocking me out. So that's... The way to like lock your opponent down out of four and of course you know they can start attacking at six frames and um oh stop stop jack please so i mean you know any like jabs or anything will like uh lose to it try like down jabs down jab will lose to it because you can just crouch under the jab but that's when you start wrapping up some of the other options like say um the crouch grabs they're trying to crouch grab you a crouch, uh, dick punch you. You can do the crouch throws. So I'm demonstrated with this one, yeah. You try to do the same thing, you get beat out. Crouch grab, so if they're trying to do the one single thing that can beat out the four, the down jab, you got that locked and loaded if they ever try to do that. Um, and you see, yeah, the next thing is gonna be the one plus two grab. The one plus two grab comes out of eight frames, so it will beat armor and it will beat, um, let me see, uh, other stuff like you know any other jabs like while using four, any other hits I mean. So yeah, it beats out armor, beats out while using four. The only thing it doesn't beat out unfortunately is rage art, because rage art does activate at eight frames. So it uh, touching the opponent exactly at eight frames after up four three makes it to where armor. I mean rage art is a good option to beat it out. So just keep in mind you can't be too heavy on the grab spam when they're enraged because you can get super super messed up um but yeah the next one again if they're trying to mash like down jab on you you have another one of your great options to lock them down with the forward two also just if they're trying to duck under your highs to lock you out i tried down two it hit me out so forward two is really really good here except comes out at nine frames so again you have to be wary you can start getting um beat out by some of the cheeky options like armor and rage but if i try to do anything other than that it'll just knock me out you know um so just keep that in mind so again in rage it's, it's it's pretty risky in rage you know what i'm saying um and the next one we have is a two the three plus four and the forward one and all these come out at 12 frames uh same situations the two um uh, well i mean you want to use it in heat it'll just armor through everything in heat unfortunately it looks like you might be able to get grabbed out of this. So, just for demonstration purposes. Let me see. Is that the two? Let's put heat on Jack. Let's do opponent's heat. Activate. That's a huge, huge counter. 
to that, the grab up forward was still 11 frames. So just be in mind, the 11 frames will beat it out. Same thing with the 3 plus 4. Well, actually, the 3 plus 4 is working out a little bit better. Maybe it's because he's a little bit farther away. Okay, well, the 3 plus 4 is working here. So if you want to beat grabbers, um, you can do the 4. Just be, be wary when you're trying to go for the armor. Uh, Gamma Hall 2 and Heat, you can't get grabbed out. Same with the forward one. The forward one just beat him out at 12 frames. Um, the one comes out at 14, so they have plenty of time to mash out after one, and then even on the three, three super, super slow. They'll beat them out like that. Of course, the grab will counter hit them again. It'll trade with 13. So just be aware if you're going for your mid one, you can get beat out a little bit. Um, but that's when you use some of the quicker mids like forward two. Or just lock them down with four, the grab, any of the quicker options if they are trying to mash on you. Also, they are on crouch, so it's not really much you can sidestep. Here, let's try to size. This one's the slowest one that comes out at 16 frames on hit. But you can only sidestep into the foreground, I mean, background, since you're in crouch. Let's try the P2 side. See if sidestepping on the P2 helps it. Now, yeah, you're pretty locked down in this. In crouch, at this minus, even though you can trade with 16. Only thing you have to be about 15 frames does come out, so they can really, really mash on you. So just be wary, you know. But that's definitely like, since they have that potential to mash on you, they might sometimes want to take it. And that just makes your stuff options even that much better. Um, more likely to hit. And then, uh, you know, let's see. One final thing about this is that this is pretty, pretty bad. Is that you can't block Rage Art on hit. And, and, and this stance, you're just completely locked into it. So anything they do, any attack you do, you're going to get beat up. So one thing is record right here. This is just so I'm doing up 4-3 into nothing. Up 4-3 into nothing. He, he can't cancel at all. Whoops. So he, he have to commit after up 4-3. Because he can't block. And also, he'll get Rage Arted. And he just eats Rage If you do nothing, you'll just eat Rage Art. So yeah, just keep in mind, you cannot block Rage Art on hit. So you like, we have to use use Gamma Full Hell 4 to beat it out. So in Rage, it's pretty, pretty risky. I mean, in Rage, you have to commit to the high to stuff a Rage Art. So you put yourself in a super bad 50-50 in Heat. I mean, when they have Rage. Either you take the Rage Art, either they do Rage Art or they duck. You can't back throw out? No. It doesn't have enough time. And the Rage Art, I mean, especially with Jax, um, you just get knocked out. So, like, um, let's just demonstrate it here. Up forward three, jump away. I mean, up close, it's just going to catch him. And I'm thinking, like, maybe the only way is, like, far away. So, I mean, at range... You could do that for sure, but up close, it's just going to catch you. But even at, at farther ranges, the thing about it is that like a lot of times, the ranges aren't that scary. Like, for example, the two might whiff. I can let me show it off right here. It's not even scary at that range. A lot of times, even the two will just whiff. See? See, like, at very, very tip range, it's possible to make it with. So just keep that in mind. At tip range, I mean, you can, you know, try to bait it out at tip range, but a lot of times your opponent's not even going to be trying to mash on you because if your opponent knows that tip range, you can't really enforce the mix because it'll whiff like that. Chances are they're just going to, like, not do anything. So it's mainly just when they're up close to you, you got to worry about it. Um, but, yeah, unfortunately, I, wish we, I really wish we could block... Out of it. It really sucks that when they're in heat, you have to put yourself in such a predicament. But it's useful that you know that just so you're aware um, and you don't get messed up, you know. But yeah, guys, uh, that's going to end it for the up forward three. Let's go ahead and move on into the next Gamma House Chance Transition. 
Okay, and so for the next stance transition, um, I added this one just to, you know, be studious and make sure we go over all of them. But I would say this is hands down the worst stance transition. And as you can tell by the frames here, I mean, the frames are not looking good. They have so much time to attack after everything. Um, and first off, back 3-2 is a mid-high. So on block, they can just duck and launch. So you don't want really to be throwing this out too much in neutral. So and then even... Um, you know, on block, you're like not plus at all. On block, you're zero. So, being in zero in this stance is horrible because there's like the fastest thing you can do out of here is Gamma 4, which comes out at 14. So, like, even on this at zero, they have 14 frames to interrupt. It doesn't even lock them down. Or 14 frames to trade, 13 to interrupt. Um, and then everything besides that, I mean, the best thing you could do to prevent mashing after that it would just be, like, the armor options, you know? But they have plenty of time to grab you out. You don't really lock them down. Because, um, yeah, the Gamma Hall 2 plus 4 comes out at 20 frames. The 2, if you had heat, would come out at 20 frames to armor. Um, I mean, maybe, like, to beat out some things cheekily, you could still, like, high crush some jabs. Let's try to high crush some jabs. Turn these off. So, I mean, you can still do that. That's one thing you could do. Uh, so, there's a little bit of tech, you know what I'm saying? But besides that, there's not much going on for it, especially on block. And on hit, it's not much better. I mean, on hit, you could at least lock them down from the jab. You just put them on hit with the 4 because it beats that out at 10. Let's try this. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, on hit, it'll actually still lock him down. Um, and then, but besides that, I mean, like, the throw. The throw will get beat out on hit by 11 frames. Can't even throw him. I mean, now you could armor on hit. I wonder if on hit you could crush again. On hit, you could crush again. I mean, which is not that much great stuff. And then potentially, like, none of these options here beat out armor or rage. The fastest one that we have that does beat out moves at 9 frames, the back 3-2 into Gamma 4... Come on, four on hit, we'll lose to Rage Art. So even on hit, you can't even, if they have Rage, you cannot take your turn. Um, I'm, it's about to get really bad here. I'm about to show you something. Whoops. So you're on hit, they can just Rage Art. So I got no option to stuff Rage Art. None of my quickest options beat it on block or on hit. And the worst part about it, let's scroll down here. I have a, you cannot block Rage Art on hit or on block. Like, so this is some secret anti-jack tech. If a jack ever does back 3-2 into Gamma Hell, Rage Art is essentially, for all purposes, guaranteed. The only hope that jack can have of, like, winning that situation is that, say he does, like, this attack. Whoops. The Gamma Hell 2 and Heat to, like, just do so much damage that you just die. You know what I'm saying? It does a good chunk, but it doesn't, you know, if it doesn't kill, you're dead. Um, and just to demonstrate it, on block, right? Let's put him on block. You go into stance, you're going to get hit. Even on hit, you try to hit him. You can't block in time. You get out every time. So again, Rage Art really, really screws over back 3-2. The only counterplay I can think of is doing the third hit extension. To just, you know, not even go into Gamma Hell and just knock them out. But like baiting that, like a, a third, the, the third hit high, like trying to just play that mind game is just so, so risky. Like I wouldn't recommend back 3-2 for you to use at all. It's mainly just for combos, you know what I'm saying? Mainly combos so you can do stuff like this. Trying to use it in neutral is just complete dog water. If anything, just know these frames. Just so if you ever just accidentally lands at it. Or just, I don't know, maybe you're playing around. Just so happens to know. But yeah, especially in Rage, do not do it. You will die. Unless you want to go big brain. Maybe that's the one big brain play you can do. Just wall splat him into a combo. But other than that really niche situation, do not use this move. But yeah, let's go ahead and move on to the next one. 
All right, guys, and so now we're on to the final stance transition. And um, this one is a little bit tricky, mainly because you get guaranteed follow-ups on hit. And it's usually the move itself is punchable on block. But there's a little bit of mind games we're going to go over. Um, we have the frame data on the screen. Um, I don't want to go into it too much because it doesn't really matter too much on block or hit. Mainly because on hits, this move, like uh, most of you will probably know, it guarantees crouch throws. So on hit, you never really want to go for anything besides that. I mean, if you're not going for the crouch throws or you miss it, you're essentially just dropping the combo. Um, it's super valuable. I mean, once a heat engager, one does a little bit more damage and sends them through the floor. Any options is that. I mean, um, there's really no point in doing them. I mean, unless maybe you want to get crazy by doing like Gamma How 2 on hit into that. But that's a risk in its own. You should just take your guaranteed damage. I mean, I guess you could put him in a 50 50 that gets to break the wall with that. But yeah, most of the time, just take that crouch grab, get your heat, fill him through the floor, and um, take your damage. But besides that, mainly the tricky situation about this one is on block. So one thing I just want to show you real quick is that if you do it solo, this move by itself is minus 11. So it's punishable on block. But if you went to Gamma Howl, if you try to do any other options, you're going to get beat out because it's already minus 11. You, made a, you make it minus 11 when you go into stance. I mean, minus 3 when you go into stance, but all your options are so slow that you easily get beat out. And essentially, they still get their punish. So on block, what you're supposed to do is mix with forward, 3 plus 4 into the bubble. You're supposed to cheese their punish by doing armor when you go into stance. So you can make their punish just get armored through. So that's the tech. Um, you can do that with 3 plus 4 only when it's not heat. And the next best option is just going to be the Gamma Hall 2 when you're in heat. So, you know, it actually doesn't work out too bad when you combine it with, like, if it hits on standing. And you just want to go for it. Or if it hits on standing blo uh, block, you want to go for it. So that's actually not too bad of a flow chart. It might be a little cheeky way you want to land the Gamma Howl uh, 2 uh, after 4 3 plus 4 with a little bit of mind games like that. But, um, you know, it has to be a little bit risky. Also, right there, you could do you could do 4 2 and 4 1 to crush. Our high crushing options come in clutch once again. We go from minus 11, getting punished with the jabs. We can armor through it, or like we can high crush it. So there's a lot of cheekiness attached to this um, on block. Um, only thing I would have to worry about is if you want to go for the like, armor options, then they could start to like grab you. Let's see, let's be punch. This is going to be it right here. So then that's like the next level to read. And you know, with some of these launching throws, it can be very risky. And as well as like, uh, say for example, I mean, Jack has an 11 frame launching throw. So it would almost be like an option select um, on the punish. I mean, you get a guaranteed throw attempt. Because, I mean, if I just do this solo and no armor, I can break. Just to demonstrate it. Oh, I'm not trying to break. Uh, hello? Oh, there we go. I don't know why I was having a hard time breaking that. And that's an 11, that's a 12 frame grab, but, just, you know, just for, um demonstration and then uh but if i go into gamma how you know it'll grab me out same thing with the two i mean if it's anything slower than that though you can on punish if they do like 11 frame they have to do 11 frame. they do a 12 frame like jinji duck under it's low cheekiness um but yeah what else i want to cover about this stance kind of covers it i mean um just be wary of the grabs you sometimes 50 50 on the punish you just keep them guessing on the punish and then whenever you do land it, get that crouch um, grabs. Um, sometimes just going crazy on this might be good, you know. And once you spam that a lot, maybe sometimes you can open up with the mid now. But um, that was pretty, pretty good. Um, pretty useful stuff. But yeah, I think that's mainly going to cover it for this stance. That's going to be the last of our moves. Oh yeah, one last thing. You can block Rage Art on hit, but not block. So of course on hit, I mean, you get guaranteed follow-ups. Um, so of course, you know, you beat out Rage Art, right? Let's see, what do I want to do? Oh yeah, we just put him on block. But it's mainly on block if you go into 
uh, transition and you try to do some finicky stuff, that's where Jin can really mess you up. Again, just be wary of the rage. You can't block it in time. I'm gonna try to hold back. I just get hit. The four doesn't stuff it. And I don't even think the two try to beat it out. The two might just be too slow. So the two just gets beat out. So even your super high mega damage option that you might want to do to kill them while they're in rage doesn't even connect. The most you can do is four here. I mean, I imagine you probably do four too then as well. No, yeah, you can only do four. So if you're gonna go into Gamahau and you think they might rage art, I mean, I wouldn't do it unless they're so low health that the four is gonna kill. Just keep that in mind. If you try to go for the 50-50 on the punish, they can get a big hard read with that. So um, just be a little bit patient with it. But also, you can kind of bait them. If you do 4 3 plus 4 solo, you can't block it. Since it's only minus 11, the Rage Art doesn't punish in 11 frames. But uh, maybe just be more of like a mix up. Or maybe confirm when they see you go into stance. But maybe you, you could test some people like that, you know. Kind of mix them up a little bit. But yeah, that's going to be covering it mainly for all the stance transitions. I mean, the only one I didn't go over is the down 4 2 1. But because that's not using neutral, it's purely combos, you know. Um, but yeah, guys, that's going to cover it. Hope you guys enjoyed the uh, overview of the Gamma House stance. Um, I know I didn't talk too much about the 3 plus 4. I'm going to make a separate video on that because that's a whole other beast of its own. I can make a whole other long video about it, which I will. But um, let me know if I missed anything, or if y'all have some secret tech, or. Um, if I didn't explain anything 100% correct, or you think I'm incorrect somewhere, uh, feel free to leave a comment. But yeah, guys, hope you enjoyed a lot. Um, hope you learned a lot. And I'll catch you guys on the next one, boys. Peace out.